morning, good afternoon. You ready? Or you want me to wait? All right. This was a defining week. A defining week on so many parts. The most definition of this week is you need to mark it as the moment that the new Democrat Socialist wing of the party overtook their own leadership. You saw it in every aspect. You saw when the progressives fight back, they win. That you could not even ask Congresswoman Omar to apologize this time. That they had to water down their own amendment and could not even focus on stopping anti-Semitism. And this is the second time this has happened. The other part that you have watched is the vote that we had today. What's interesting, when you become the majority party, you reserve the first 10 numbers for those bills that are most important to you. When we were in the majority, H.R. 1 was making sure tax, hard-earned taxpayers are able to keep more of their own money. What's the Democrats' H.R. 1? To actually take more of the taxpayers' money and give it to themselves, the politicians. We saw that this new Democrat Socialist Party was presented with an amendment that recognizes that allowing illegal immigrants to vote devalues the franchise and diminishes the voting power of American citizens. They rejected that. What's most ironic is we voted on this a few months before, and 49 Democrats had voted yes. 49 voted to uphold the franchise of the American voters. Today, only six Democrats voted for the identical language only six. What changed in those few short six months? The sanctity of the ballot is suddenly controversial in the new Democrat Socialist Party. The Socialist grip could not be tighter. This week, the House Republicans also asked for unanimous consent for the 12th, 13th, 14th, and 15th time to consider the Born Alive Abortion Survivor Protection Act. And each time, the Democrats reject it. But we will continue to ask every single day until we are able to bring the bill up. This isn't the Democratic Party that we've come to know. The transition is now complete. That the Democrat Socialist wing of the party controls their own leadership. We continue to see the very clear contrast between freedom and socialism throughout this Congress. Open for any questions you may have. Yes. Um, you've been eager to Where? 23 Republicans voted against, including some of your leadership team. Can you respond to that? Why can't you keep us from knowing? Well, when you watch what the Democrats did, they watered down this amendment. The frustration on the Republican side was mo more that you watered down the amendment. Um, yes, we are always stronger when we speak with one voice, but I think America is very clear on this. We oppose anti-Semitism. They have a clear problem on the Democratic side. The first time that it happened, it was the Republicans not having a vehicle, just one on a motion to recommit to even bring it up. We brought it up, we spoke with one voice. When it happened again, this time the Democrats didn't even ask Congresswoman Omar to apologize. Their own members on the Democratic side, Elliot, their chairman, Chairman Engel, he was frustrated that they had to add more to um, the resolution to even get it to come to the floor. That's what they spent the entire week on. So yes, we're very united and frustrated that the Democratic Party is now taken over by the socialist progressive wing on their side. Specifically, yes, ma'am. <clears throat> well, I always think it's more that we're stronger when we all vote together, but everybody has their own voting card. No, we removed him from all of his committees. The action we took with Congressman Steve King was based upon what we heard in our own party saying that is not what this country believes and it's not what the party of Lincoln stands for. We took action. We didn't have to take something to the floor. We didn't have to wake we weeks. We didn't have to water down our action at all. We removed him from every single committee. I think it's an action that people would celebrate throughout the country. The difference here is the Democratic leadership would not take action. When this first happened, with Congresswoman Omar said it's all about the Benjamins, it was the Republicans that had to take action and move something to the floor that the Democratic Party joined with us and voted against. The Democrats then realized by us saying that, they, they said, Congresswoman Omar, she should apologize. Well, 
Just a short time later, more anti-Semitism came out of her mouth. Then you had their own Democratic congressmen object to that. So the leadership said they would take up, an, they'd take up a resolution. They'd bring it to the floor, and it would focus just on anti-Semitism. They couldn't even do that. The progressive wing, the socialism wing of the party fought back, and they won. So they had to water it down. And on the second time of this language coming out of her voice, no apology this time and no removal of committees. I believe if you talk to a number of these Democratic members, they think she should be removed from her committees. There's no punishment, not even on the second time. There's less punishment on the second time of anti-Semitism talk. It's even rougher. Yes? Congressman King uh, has said that his comment with the, he was misquoted and that the reporter conflated his own comments with what he then attributed to King there is no tape. King told you that he was misquoted. Why don't you believe him? You know, I sat with uh, Congressman King, and there's other instances. There's videos of this language, too, being used, and uh, that's the action we took, and um, Congressman King and I have discussed this. The conference committee has discussed it, and the conference as a whole. Yes? Well, the, the first part I can do is if you're looking for the future is I have to recruit when it comes to diversity. Look, number of women, um, the ability of a focus looking like America at the same time. I think in a few short months you'll see that that is paying off. You'll see the individuals across the country who's running under the Republican wing will look very diverse and look like America. I have some examples about to roll out their announcement, and I'll bring you to that rollout because it'll be exciting. I don't want to step ahead of them right now. Through the president, the president's been talking a lot about pardons recently, and he was also speaking very favorably about Paul Manafort after his conviction yesterday. What would your reaction be if the president pardoned Paul Manafort? You know what? He's never talked to me about it, and he hasn't done it, so if he does it, you can ask me about it then. It's just a hypothetical. Um, I wasn't leader at the time, but uh, I don't. I think you heard a number of members who spoke out on that. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Um, just a follow up on Al's question. Uh, mm -hmm. Why not a resolution on that? And then uh, another question for you: Are you, Do you consider this issue of uh, the anti-Semitism uh, is? Do you consider this something that uh, is lose the vote? Let's move on as a house, or? Is this something that Republicans, you know, you've expressed concern about where the Democrats are on this? Is this something you guys were planning to bring up in, in whether it's motions we, to recommit or... We didn't think we'd have to bring it up again, but we thought maybe the resolution we brought forward, maybe if the member apologized, maybe you would learn from that. We did not think in a short time period, less than a month, that that same member would spew the type of language she spewed again. It wasn't even Republicans who spoke up first. It was their own members on their own side of the aisle. But their views did not win out at the end of the day. At the beginning, it did. They had a resolution that would have focused just on the anti-Semitism. But they, they even refrained from naming the Congresswoman. Then they even watered it down further because they could not pass it because of this new progressive wing of the party. Yes, sir. I've had I've I've had Democrat members come up to me and say that yes, those are private conversations. I'll keep it private like that. I don't want I don't want to harm the Democrats within their own conference. Yes. Well, we didn't want to have to invite it. We, we, we put a bipartisan uh, MTR up, one that less than six months ago, 49 Democrats voted for. And a number of them voted present. So it was probably the easiest place that you could find bipartisanship. The most difficult, let's talk about H.R. 1 for one moment. This was put through and referred to 10 committees. The entire bill didn't even have a markup. 
The only committee that marked it up was House Administration. You all understand what House Administration is. It is not selected by the conference who serves on there. This is selected sheerly by the speaker and the leader. It is the only committee that marked up, and they didn't have jurisdiction over the full bill, so they only could mark up 60% of it. The chairwoman, Zoe Lofgren of House Administration, promised the Republicans that it would be marked up in all the other committees. It was not marked up in one of them. Republicans offered 28 amendments in House administration. You know how many were taken? Zero. The idea of H.R. 1 is going to take taxpayers' money to give to politicians. The idea that if you're convicted of a felon, you get to vote. Even if you're convicted of a voter fraud, you're now going to be able to vote. I do not believe this bill is going to go anywhere. But the really sad part about this, this is the, def the definition of the Democratic New Party that this is their number one bill. This is their most important bill because they chose what number to give it. We chose to give taxpayers, make sure they get able to keep more of their own money. They chose to take more of the taxpayer money and give it to themselves as politicians. That is the real ch changing moment. Yes, ma'am. Well, I support. I haven't seen the bill yet, so once I see the bill, I'll be able to talk to you about it. But I think the Mueller report should come forward exactly as the law says it should. I believe the Attorney General will take a look at it, simply as we've done these in the past, uphold the law and uphold the tradition, and supply that publicly to the rest what's able to be in it. Yes, ma'am. Um, no decision has been made on that yet, but I, I, I would hope, and as I listened to Elliot Engel yesterday on the floor, his disappointment, his disappointment that even the resolution could not have been separated, that the resolution could not just talk about what's wrong with anti-Semitism, that the Democrat Party could not bring that bill to the floor and pass it, even though we would vote for it. Um, that is a real turning moment for this Democratic Party. They have shifted to who they've been in the past, and that's why this week is a defining week for them. Last question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I've heard Democrats argue this week that Republicans don't have credibility in going after Congresswoman Omar on advancing anti-Semitic tropes when they say those very same tropes were advanced by Republicans in the past when people like George Soros were impeached. Uh, I wonder what your response to that is. That is not true by any shape of the form. Why? It's very simple. Because listen to what uh, Congresswoman Omar said. She questioned the ability of an American to have allegiance to America if they were Jewish. She questioned that. We've watched in history that question be asked before. What's really concerning to me is that if we don't speak strong enough, does that question continue to get asked and does it grow? And in this Democratic Party, that would, they were not big enough to even name the individual who said it, nor this time to even ask for an apology, nor be able to bring it on the floor by itself. That is a turning moment, and that concerns me as an American and concerns me as a freedom for everybody else. Thank you very much.